condemnation. So what condemnation is the Bible speaking about? And I'm going to try to be as clear as I can tonight as I look at my own life as a child of God. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been um, put in places where I have felt absolutely condemned. It felt like, uh, like most of you probably have. People have walked away from you, and people have given up on you. And you feel that condemnation. It doesn't always come in words, but it comes in deeds. And um, unfortunately, there is not enough, uh, let's say, character out there today to be able to address those things so that we might be able to deal with what the Lord has. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. It's quite clear, Colossians 3.3. 3. Uh, so we are not in condemnation by the law. Right. Amen. We're not being condemned because of the law. We're saved tonight. Amen. It said there in Colossians 3.3, 3, for you are dead. Amen. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Right. So the law... And I know you know this because most of you that have been saved for the time, you know that when you got saved that you were dead in your body. That means the flesh is right. now dead. Am I right, right. in saying that? Yeah. So, but it's always hard to get a hold of that in your mind, isn't it? Right. Like, um, I don't like being dead. I, I enjoy things. Don't you enjoy things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like food. Amen. And praise God for food. Well, I'm eating stranger food now, but I... Praise the Lord for food. Sure. Amen. Yeah. My uh, my appetite would like to have a chocolate candy bar with almonds in it. Amen. Oh, a big one for Hershey's. Yeah. Oh, almonds, that's how Yes. Made with almond milk. Chocolate. Oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, So nobody can hold anything against you. 
Now, even if you don't act like a child of God, and people have said that to you, I'm sure they have, they have to have said, uh, one time or another in our life, I thought you were a Christian. Right. Well, I shouldn't worry you if you're saved. Yeah. Amen. I, I am a, still a sinner. Oh, but of course, that doesn't give me reason to go ahead and right. sin against God in Romans 6 1. Amen. Right. Grace should not abound because of my sin. Right. Amen. So then we also have, first of all, by the law, we don't have any condemnation by the law, we don't have it by God, and we also don't have it by conscience. I've got a conscience. Do you all have a conscience? Uh, I know we do. Uh, there are things that we do that we'd uh, be able to like to take back. Yes. Amen. And it hangs there, but it hurts. But God has given me a different conscience. My conscience has been purged. That's what the Bible says. Yeah from sin. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And no longer can I offend God. You say, well, of course you can if you sin. Well, when I sin, I'm sinning against my flesh. Right. I'm sinning against me. Right. And God will deal with that, obviously. Oh, yeah. But that brings us to 1 Peter 3.16. Uh, it says in 1 Peter 3.16, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, uh, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Amen? Amen. And so, if I'm a child, of, I'm, I shouldn't say that, being that I'm a child of God, that means that my conversation ought to be in Christ. Amen. I mean, there's a lot of things that I ought not to be saying that is with my mouth Amen. because God has made it possible for me to go ahead and be the child of God that I should be. And there are going to be people that don't like that. And they're going to be evildoers that are going to stand up against you. But they falsely accuse you, I hope. Right. Because there's no condemnation than which are in Christ. That's what the Bible, we just read that. I don't have any condemnation with God because I'm in Christ. Amen. Right. So my condition has to be the fact that I am a child of God, that I am out of Christ, in Christ. And it ought to be, um, it ought to be something that ought to be evident to other people. Sure. That is in the world even our brothers and sisters in Christ. So I'm going to go back to Romans 8, 1 again, and I thought this was just amazing how God does this. He writes these things down, and then he gives us two thoughts here real quick for this evening. It says, There is therefore no now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Do you all agree with that? But then God throws this little curveball in there, and he says, Who walk not after the flesh? Well, of course, I don't walk after the flesh. Amen? But after the Spirit. I am so spiritual every day. I get up in the morning, I pray, I read the Word of God, I read Proverbs like I'm supposed to every day. Proverbs 30, there's 29, 30, 30, 30. Amen? Read Proverbs 30, and tomorrow 31, which I love. I love Proverbs 31, especially as you get to the very end. Virtuous woman. Amen? So I'm looking forward to reading Proverbs 31. Amen. What does it got to do with anything I'm saying tonight? Well, not a whole lot, but uh, it says, who walk not after the flesh. So that means that somehow, God is saying to me that I can walk after the flesh. Sure. Amen? Yes. I mean, think about it. The flesh is always in the process of drawing us away from God. Salvation removes condemnation. you all agree with that? Amen. So what about a Christian that walks after the flesh? We're not talking about unsaved people, because unsaved people obviously walk after the flesh. Yes. Why in the world would they ever walk after the Spirit when they don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior? So tonight, we can look at ourselves and say, I am a born-again child of God. Amen. He is my Father. Yes. And so that means that God is telling me that I'm going to have problems if I walk after the flesh. Right. That's what the Bible is saying here, amen? amen? So we may be doing things, and yet we might be doing it without the hope of God in the flesh. And what I'm saying is that we don't always trust God so we get in the flesh. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you say, well, I don't know if I feel that way. Well, we'll see as we go along if you're in the flesh. Right. We know that he that is without Christ is without hope. So you and I have hope. Amen. 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 Uh, we're going to heaven. Amen. And that's a great thing to look forward to. And I'm... I'm getting a couple of scores quicker there than most people. Amen, Jake? Yeah. Praise the Lord. 
But that doesn't mean that you've got anything over on me because just because you're young doesn't mean that you're going to make it as far as I'm at. Amen. Amen. We might stand before the Lord even this evening. So that takes me to Ephesians 2.12. And uh, I think you're going to like these verses. I think we need to use the Bible when we talk about these things. Amen. Amen. Uh, that at that time, we were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. Amen. Covenants of promise. More than one. Having no hope and without God in the world. So we know that we were without Christ, and we're so familiar with that. But now that we're saved, we have Christ. So having Christ in me means that somehow, as a professing Christian, I ought to be careful about walking in the flesh. That's right. Amen. And we often say, what does it mean to be walking in the flesh? I think the Bible has made it clear that we sometimes can be carnal Christians, meaning that we walk after the flesh. That word carnal is pretty wicked if you really look it up in the dictionary. It means that we'll do things that would probably shock other people if they knew about it. Amen. Carnal. Uh, it's kind of like the person that has claimed salvation uh, and, and gave up. And I hate to go there, but it was needful to know that a person that was um, in homosexuality and they get saved, right. and they can, yeah, yeah. And every person be saved. Amen? Yeah. I mean, you could be a child molester and get saved. Sure. Uh, you yeah. could be with, uh, a robber and murderer and you get saved. Right. Amen? Amen? But what amazes me is how soon they're drawn back into that wicked lifestyle yeah. claiming to be a child of God. Now that confuses me. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't have a right to claim their salvation because that's between them and the Lord. Right. So walking back in the flesh, what is it that causes us to go ahead and walk back in the flesh? Amen. I'm going to give you an idea about that this evening, which I think is the truth out of God's Word. Amen. And we know what John 3.18 says. You know John 3.16. Yeah. And this is what it says in John 3.18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Amen. Right. So should that be a ticket? Or let's say, should that be a way for me to go ahead and sin in the flesh? No, no God forbid, the Bible says. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Right. So I've got a couple of things to think about here. Amen? If I'm a child of God, that means I'm not condemned. I believe that Jesus Christ yeah. is the Son of God. I believe Him and, and accepted Him in my salvation. But if I don't believe Him, I'm condemned already. Yeah. But we can also be condemned as a child of God, not going to hell. Right. Amen? Yeah. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And that's the person that's not saved. Right. And we know in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. We understand that. Amen? Yeah. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if you've done that tonight, that should make you um, excited. That you're here. Amen. Right. Because what I'm telling you has nothing to do with me. It comes out of the word of God. And God has brought some thought tonight in regards to us as being a professing Christian. And it says again, there is therefore no, uh, now no condemnation, as it says in Romans 8.1. But then again, we bring up the second part of that verse. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right. Now we have to ask ourselves tonight. What is happening to the believer that is walking after the flesh? Interesting thought, isn't it? And, you know, we've all been there. If not, we might be even doing it right now. Right. I, I understand what I'm saying. Right. Now, now, wake up here and stay with me. I know it's, it's tough. I, I don't want to be too boring, but uh, focus for a little bit. Amen. Romans 5.16. I'm going to take you there. Amen? Amen? And not as it was by one that sinned, so it is the gift by the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto what? Amen. Justification. So I know that no matter what I do wrong in my flesh, that God is going to, uh, if you will, forgive me. Right. He has justified it. Yeah. He is standing before God, right. standing there for me as my advocate. Yeah. He's saying, I know that news. I know he's a bad dude. But all right, I got it covered in my blood. Amen. And what does that do for me? It helps me to rejoice in the fact that when I do get into flesh, yeah. That God can forgive me if Amen. I go to him and forgive me. Right. Yeah. But often what happens to a lot of folks is that they will not go to God. They'll get something in their craw and they'll hang on to it. Even though they stand against God, even though they know that they're in the flesh, right. even though they don't want to give it up, yeah. even though they know that what they're doing is wrong, right. they'll stand against God no matter what it means yep. in the flesh. 
And they are bringing condemnation to themselves. Whether they want to believe it or not. And if they are saved, praise God. And again, I can't judge that, neither can you. Romans 5.18 says, There is as Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, it says the free gift came upon all men on the justification of life. Amen? So God has justified you through His Son. Amen. As if you have never sinned. Isn't that amazing? Why in the world would I want to go ahead and make myself work in the flesh when God has done so much for me in the Spirit? Amen? Why wouldn't I want to spend more time in the Spirit of God than I want to spend in the flesh? Now you say, preacher, you do that all the time? No, I guess I get this too. It must be I'm a human being. Amen? But I do know I have First John. One not. Amen? I do know that there are many, many verses that God said I can go to Him and find forgiveness. Amen? So what about flesh-walking believers? I like that, don't you? Flesh-walking believers. Wow. Like the walking dead. But if we were the walking dead, we'd be all right. Amen? You say, what do you mean by that? Well, we're supposed to be dead, walking in the spirit. So that means I'm dead to the flesh. Does that make sense? So we are the walking dead. We should be. Now, what you thinking about on TV? Right. I don't know if you've ever watched that commercial. I don't know why I'm saying that. But I guess the guy wanted to have his insurance on his uh, air conditioner. And she said the only thing that they, that, that they pay for is the, uh, what do they call it, a zombie apocalypse. Amen. So, what does that have to do with anything? Well, we're not zombies. We're walking dead. In the <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what about this? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3.9. Here we go. Said, 
You know, I'm pleased with you. I know that you're not perfect. That's why I sent my son. When's the last time God said, man, I'm really happy with what you're doing. I'm really pleased with how you're reading the word of God and how you're faithful to the things of God. I didn't design this thing, church, and sometimes people think I did. I have nothing to do with it. Praise God, and neither do you. That's what God did for us. Grace and truth. Can you imagine that? Where did grace and truth come from? God? Jesus Christ? He kind of married those things. I think I have a verse in a minute here I wrote down. But in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know what he's doing? He's appealing for the kindness of God. That's all. And God is full of it. Yes. Kindness. Yes. If he wasn't, my word, where would we all be? Don't we just get so caught up with ourselves thinking, well, I don't deserve to go to hell. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. Yeah. You know, I, I do all kinds of good deeds. I, I even pray for Charles. Can you imagine that? You need to start praying for Jesse. If I pray for Jesse, uh, you know, or maybe. But I, I need to do all these good things. And then God's going to be happy with me. Amen? Shouldn't grace be something that is brought into my life for salvation? God's grace brought it all to men. Amen. Amen. And it appeared in the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Himself. Right. I'm excited about this stuff. Can you imagine that God laid this all out for us? Should the grace of God that brings forth salvation be any more, uh, let's say, apparent than it is of Jesus Christ? I mean, Jesus Christ is the uh, I guess he's the all in all of grace. My word. And it's too bad that we still use the Old Testament to condemn people when in fact God has taken condemnation away. He's told me that I am no longer going to be held by the Ten Commandments, but I need to live them right. in my life because they were sending me to hell. They were the schoolmaster. Right. That's what was destroying me. Yeah. But now I stand in the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Shouldn't there? Should grace sacrifice truth? No. How can it? And you know what people are doing? It? They're taking grace and saying, well, even though I know it's the truth, I still don't have to live. I still don't have to do what it says. Because it's okay, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Amen. I don't know if you're going to enjoy heaven. Right. It's not what you think it is. Because if you knew what it was, you wouldn't take truth and throw it aside. And what is truth? Truth is doing what God says faithful. Can I be more clear than that tonight? It's being faithful. Amen. And being faithful hurts sometimes. Amen. It does. Amen. I want to mention something in a moment of, what was it, yesterday, the day before, I, I kind of did something where I lost control of my footing, and, and I went down and hit my elbow on a piece of steel. And it hurt so bad. Yeah. It made shock waves. That's the funny part there, too, isn't it? I wasn't laughing all that. <laughs> it went, I mean, it just, it almost got my tongue. Oh, yeah. I didn't bite on it, but I did bite on it. <laughs> but then words were just about, Two syllables away. Do you understand what I mean? No. <laughs> Where did that little bumblebee bite you? Right. And do it. Amen. I don't know why it's for the I want to praise the Lord. But I just said I had a verse read about Psalm 85 10. I want, I want you to see this. The righteousness and peace is a kiss of God. Amen. Look, this one says mercy and truth yeah. meet together. You know what I just said? Amen. Grace and truth together. Yeah. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Yeah. Isn't that God? My word, that is the true essence of a good relationship. Yeah. Mercy and truth. Yeah. You understand? It's like finding the, the love of your life. It's finding the person yeah. that you want to be married to. It's the yeah. one that you believe that God has put into your life. Yeah. Amen. Mercy and truth. God has brought that together. 
Amen. And why doesn't that make us happy? Right. It's God's idea, amen? Right. And if we talk about the ministration of truth, and that comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, we can't throw away grace, or can we throw away truth? Amen. It all works together. Yes, you may not enjoy everything that God wants us to do in our life, amen? Right. He might want us to be faithful in church and right. faithful to reading the Word of God. Right. He might want those things in our life, right. amen? Yeah. And that's so true that we ought to, but we can't throw away. Right. Second Corinthians 3 9 again. Just want to read that one more time. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, how much more doth the ministration of righteousness succeed in glory? Mm -hmm. God yes. justifying the unjust. Amen. That's you and me. That's right. And the only reason why he's done it is because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we should always, always, always remember that grace is infinite, it's eternal. And you know, likewise is true. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No matter. Right. What's he say? Come unto the Father by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's one more time look at Romans 8 and 1. There might be much more. Thank you. The Lord said, I need to go another half hour. So. Romans 8 and 1. <laughs> I love our church leader. Amen. There is therefore no condemnation now in no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. Let's focus a little bit on that last part of the verse. Who walk not after the flesh, but after what? So what are the signs of a flesh-walking Christian? Lack of faith. Amen? Lack of faithfulness. Amen? Good going, James, because I'm going to use James. Amen. James 5.12. God gives us a good idea. And there's a lot of verses. Now, I want you to notice this in James 5, 12, but, all, but above all things, my brethren, so that means he's talking to saved people. Right. You all agree with that? Because we're brethren. Right. Swear not. <coughs> I almost did. I hit that old. Neither by heaven. It's not just making a, a, a swearing to somebody to do something. Amen? Yeah. Neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. There it is. Right. But let your yea be what? Yea. And your nay be? Nay. Unless you fall into what? Condemnation. Amen? Amen? So, under pressure of injury, uh, right. such as a crushed devil, right. not moving too bad today, Amen. or under some kind of oppression, we can swear. Yes. Or curse. There's a couple of meanings there, but I believe that also means uh, swearing oh, yeah. is cursing. Sure. Now, most of us have words that we have learned in our little lives that oh, yeah. stick there with us. Yeah. Amen? Yep. And sometimes they come out when we get angry. And you, I know that all you are pure and, and all perfect, and nobody here would ever cuss or swear. But God, God says that swearing, whether it be to make an oath to somebody or swearing uh, to be cursing, is unwise speech. Amen? Uh, it should not be an outlet. And you say, well, why are you telling us that tonight? Well, it was brought up uh, to me this week. Amen? And I know that you've been there. So then, and I know there's another verse that echoes the same thing. It's from Matthew 5, 33 to 37. Uh, it illustrates um, <laughs> as a record for us. If you want to turn there with me. Matthew 5, 33. And again, you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. There it is. If you make an oath to the Lord, you better keep it. Uh, how often have we seen people baptized and say, I'll be faithful to God? Mm -hmm. Amen? Except. But I say, if you swear, not at all. Careful lest. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Okay. Uh, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair, white or black, really. <laughs> I've been looking at that stuff.
stuff you need to comb through your hair, but I said people figure it out real quick. Anyway. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For yeah. whatsoever is more than these covenant of evil. So let me say this. I think it's really talking about speech, the word of God. So if I'm going to walk in the flesh, instead of the spirit, God is saying I need to be careful of my speech. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. My speech needs to be pure. Yeah. I think one of the most discouraging things as a Christian for me is when I get around people that tell dirty jokes. Amen? Amen. Uh, filthy jokes. Right. Amen? Amen? Well, of course, when it starts happening, what's the first thing that happens to my mind? Can't blame it on you because I should turn away. Right. Amen? Amen? And so the Bible says swear not. So when I listen to something that's not pure, I'm swearing to it. Amen. I'm allowing it to become a part of my psyche. Amen. And no matter where we are, we need to shut that stuff down. Right. Amen. I remember one time I was with a young man I led to the Lord, and it was in Johnstown. I don't know if I told you this before. If I did, forgive my brain. But we pull up to a gas station. He's excited about his salvation. Uh, he, he was loving the Lord. And the man that knew him at the gas station said, Hey, listen, I got a, I got a joke to tell you. He said, If you can't tell it to my mother, don't tell me. Amen. Would that be neat? And so we have to also be careful about being embellished about things like your yeas be yeas. Right. Sometimes we're afraid to say yes right. because we know we don't mean it. Amen. If we mean it, then say yes. Amen. If you don't mean it, say no. There you go. And that's part of our speech makeup, is it not? Amen. Often we get into situations where we know that we should not be there. And we say, well, I know I shouldn't be doing this thing, but uh, I just, I'm out of control. So we embellish it and we say, uh, uh, maybe, right. maybe not. We ought to be able to be dignified as children of God. It's hard to be dignified sometimes because we live in an undignified world. But it says it's become a believer. Is that what we just read? Yeah. Amen. So if you're a believer tonight, uh, we need to be dignified. Yeah. Uh, not in just the way that we dress. But the way we talk. You know, we can dress real nice. We can look apart. But man, if, if, if we've taken our course in things that ought not to be said, being said in the flesh, then we are, if you will, we're undressing ourselves. We're becoming evil. That's it. Amen? And then, then there's a, but let your what? Communication be. We just read that. So we have to be inspired. And we can't be inspired if we're going to be fleshly Christians. Right. There's no way anybody can inspire you because as soon as you start going down that path, even though folks might come to you and say, hey, brother, I love you. I care about what's going on in your life. Well, I don't want to hear that. I've heard people say that all the time. Oh, yeah. They don't mean it. Right. You know, well, what about you? Right. Can't you say that you love somebody and mean it? Amen. Amen. But you know, once we're going down that path, it's stupid. we just can't get away from it. Yep. Just hang on to it. I don't know why it is, but that's how we go. Amen. It doesn't matter who gets involved. It doesn't matter how hard it hurts somebody else. As long as I protect myself, make my own little bubble, as long as everything's okay within my little realm, it ain't going to work, by the way. Amen? So I ought to be careful about how I say things. Amen. That's simple. Yes. It ought not to be disturbed. Right. If it disturbs me inside, I can't hide it. There's no way you can hide it, so you have to give it over to the Lord. So um, God says that there's no condemnation to us that are saved. Right. But there is condemnation to, to us that allow ourselves to be in the flesh. Yes. So if you walk in the flesh, remember this, condemnation is going to come. Amen. You won't go to hell if you're saved, but we ought to question ourselves, where am I in the Lord? Amen. Am I going to heaven? Let me read one more time Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. To walk not after the flesh. Right. That's simple. Right. Well, hopefully you're not doing that, but after the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Right. So walking in the flesh is grieving the Lord. It's disturbing my conscience. Maybe not yours. Can't sleep at night. Because you know. Right. No matter what you say, you might have to start getting anti-acid tablets. You might have to start taking... Um, these would be 
body when I was back in those days. But they have all kinds of drugs that you can take today. Why? Because your conscience is messed up. You can't, you can't open, you can't outlive that. You can't outdo it. Right. If you're going to live in the flesh, your flesh will continually draw you and destroy you in the very sight of God. And the devil will rejoice. Why? Because you don't want to be with us. Oh, yes, you'll go to heaven. Praise God for that. And one last verse, Jude 1 4. Jude 1 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Need to ask ourselves, what are we walking after tonight? The flesh and the spirit. I know it feels good to be in the flesh. I know it feels good to put family first, put the right. God first, yep. put friends first. Yep. Don't forget God. He put you first. Right. Amen. If He puts you first, then why can't He have 